Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Transcribing. We know it's important. We know we need to do it to get better at this music, but there are so many different ways you can go about transcribing. It's not just listen to an entire solo, learn the entire solo, write it down, blah, 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 blah. There are other ways you can go about using transcription to help your playing directly. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a very specific form of transcription that I love doing, and I know you're going to love it too. There is a worksheet that goes along with this video. It's completely free. The only thing you need to do to get it is go to the top of the description down below, or you can go directly to davepollock.com slash rhythm transcription. Just like it says in that URL, this is about a rhythm transcription. What is a rhythm transcription? Well, it's exactly what the name is. We're going to be transcribing a solo or part of a solo, which I'll get to in a second, but only the rhythm. What? We're not going to be going over harmony and licks and all those different cool notes. No, we're only going to be focused on the rhythm. Why is it important to focus on the rhythm here? Well, if you know anything about me, you know that I like being efficient with my practicing and transcribing is no different. I don't think you need to transcribe full solos always in their entirety to get the most out of transcription. In fact, I've only transcribed less than a handful of full solos my entire life. Most of the transcribing I've done has been little snippets, maybe a little line here, a little lick here, and I've also broken it apart. I've done just rhythm transcriptions, just note transcriptions, just harmony, just figuring out the sound someone's playing, not even the exact lick or anything. And I think that's an incredibly efficient way to practice. And it's also a great way to implement what you're transcribing right away. You don't need to spend days and weeks and months transcribing this long, long solo to use only a small part of it in your playing. You can transcribe the part that you want to learn or want to use in your playing, and then you can use it. And rhythm transcription, because you're not focused on the notes and all the other things related to it, just the rhythm, you're going to be able to apply it quickly, much quicker than you can if you did everything in the solo. Like I said, there is a worksheet that goes along with this, and I'm going to dive into that now. All right, as you see, we're here inside the rhythm transcription worksheet. And the top left, it says E flat instruments. But don't worry, if you open this up and you play tenor, soprano, you play concert pitch instrument, don't worry. In this single PDF, I include parts for E flat, B flat, and C instruments. So it's just one download one PDF with six pages and E flat, B flat, and C are all on the same worksheet. So don't freak out if you see that. What are we gonna be transcribing today? Well, we're gonna be doing Kenny Garrett's solo on his song, November 15th. I'm a big Kenny Garrett fan. I have been for many years. He's a big inspiration to me in my playing. And the song, November 15th, I just absolutely love. When I was listening to it again the other day, I've listened to it a trillion times, one little line kind of stuck out to me and I was like, you know what? This would be good to use for this rhythm transcription video. And I wrote here, it's at roughly three minutes and 41 seconds. Here's that line. Now. Okay, it's a cool little three measure phrase. I like everything about it, but I really like the rhythm. It's just a cool little rhythm. Is it earth shattering? Is it groundbreaking? Not, not really, but I like it. And if you like a line that you hear either rhythmically or otherwise, it's cool to learn it, to transcribe it, to then dissect it and see what makes it tick, what makes it sound cool. In this video, we're just focused on the rhythm aspect of it. So the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you find a line that you want to transcribe, specifically rhythmically, you're going to want to transcribe the line. Now, I transcribe the notes as well, and you don't have to do this step, actually. I encourage you to do it and it'll give you more insight into what they're playing. But if you want to literally just do the rhythm, that's fine too. But I transcribed the notes because I just wanted to, and it wasn't super difficult. So here's the line, as you see, and this is once again, this is the alto sheet. I played it on alto. So that's why I'm looking at this. If you're in B flat or C, you're going to look at that sheet, but these are the chord changes for that part of the song. And this is the exact line that he plays. And when you do this, I always recommend doing it on the instrument, then writing it down. It's kind of that thing where, you know, music theory, theory comes after music, literally in the name. I feel the same way when you're transcribing. So learn it on the instrument first, then get it written down. Okay. So here's me playing this exact line. Okay. Just say you transcribe your line, you learn it. You might learn the entire line. You might just learn the rhythms. What do you do with it? Do you have to find a song that uses the same chord changes as November 15th? No, 
because we're not focused on the notes here. The main goal here is you learned the rhythm. You now internalize the rhythm. Now we're going to apply that rhythm to a different situation. When I say different situation, I just mean maybe different chords, a different song, and you're going to create and write out, this is critical here, where you actually write out. Don't just improvise it because you can get loose and it defeats the purpose of going through the process. Write out a line that fits exactly with that rhythm. I even put the articulation in here too, not specifically talking about that in the video, but that's a good idea too. So what's a great thing to write licks over? Well, how about a two, five, one? So here is a long two, five, one in C major. That's concert E flat. So it's C for alto. And if you look, I used literally the exact same line, same rhythm, bop, boo, dot, da, ba, da, do, ba, do, ba, di, di, da, right? That exact rhythm, but now I altered the notes, the harmony, the sound, to fit over the chord changes of a two, five, one. Here's what these two lines sound like. Okay, can you hear how, yes, it's the same feel to the line, especially because I do the same articulation. It's the same rhythm that Kenny Garrett played, but because I applied it to these chord changes, it fits in a new situation. If I just played that lick right here, one of those two, two, five, one licks, and didn't tell you what it was from, would you know it's from Kenny Garrett's solo on November 15th? Probably not. Because once again, it's not the most earth shattering, crazy rhythm. It's only three measures, but the notes are so different. The chord changes are different. It sounds completely different. This is the step that you take when you're learning lines. So many people say, how do I apply transcription or how do I learn new lines? I'm, or I learned a line and when I just try to put it in my playing, it just sounds like I'm inserting a line. It's kind of copy and paste. And the answer is, well, that's because you're just copying and pasting. You're not making it your own. There's different ways to make lines your own, but in this one case, taking just the rhythm of someone's solo is so powerful because, you know, there's only 12 notes. There's only certain notes that work over certain chords, you know? So what we're focused on here is this idea of rhythm and how it affects the overall feel of the line. And I think it's so crucial that you think about that when you're improvising. So many people just think about, okay, I'm going to play these chord changes and they play straight eighth notes the entire time or, you know, just like the same lick over and over and over again with different notes. The idea is to expand your horizons and your listening, and rhythm is a great way to do that. Although I only wrote two lines here over the 251, you could write as many or as few as you want. So if you're working on a specific song or specific changes, you can sit here and write out this line 100 times. Do it in 12 different keys. Do it, you know, altering different notes each time, thinking about different alterations. Anything you want, but focus on the original rhythm and then you can really incorporate that line into your playing. All right, not everything's gonna be a two, five, one. Can I use this over a static chord, a major or a minor chord? Well, yeah, absolutely. So what I did here was I took B minor seven, so that's concert D minor seven, like impressions or so what, and I did the exact same thing. I took that exact three measure line, took the rhythms, but I changed the notes to fit what I wanted to hear over B minor seven. Here's what these two lines over my B minor seven sound like. How cool is this? We're able to apply the rhythm that we transcribed from Kenny Garrett's solo to all these different situations. And yes, the rhythms sound the same. And of course, when played back to back, you're gonna notice them, but I think they sound different because they're a different situation. I'm changing the notes, different chords. And because of that, you're going to be able to really connect different ideas together because you don't have to focus on just transcribing a lick and playing it in its entirety. You can combine a sound that you heard with a harmony that you've been working on, with a rhythm that you transcribed, with this, with that, and then you put it all together. And that's how you create your own sound and your own playing. All right. So now we did it over a two, five, one lick. We did it over just a minor chord. Can we make it over an entire song? Can we take this one lick and apply it over an entire course of a song? Well, here we go. We have everybody's favorite song, Giant Steps. So what I did was I took that three measure lick, the rhythmic lick again, I put it in the first three bars of each phrase. So the song is in four lines of four bars each. So it's gonna be bars one, two, three, rest. Five, six, seven, rest, so on and so forth. Now what I did was I was sure to 
think about the chord changes as I went through. I'm not gonna analyze the harmony of what I'm doing here because that's not the point of this video, but just so you know, when you do have a tie over the bar line, you want to usually, especially if you're definitely holding the note and you know you're going to, like in this case, you want to anticipate the next chord. So yes, in this case, F sharp works over the B7 and over the E major seven, but sometimes it might not work exactly. For example, look, in, look down here, that G sharp right here, that doesn't work over C major, even though it's in this measure, but because it's anticipating and holding it to the next measure, it does work as you'll see. So here's what it sounds like for my one chorus of Giant Steps using that exact Kenny Garrett lick the entire time. All right, if you're still watching this, thanks so much for the support and for watching this video and all the other videos that I have here on my channel. I hope there was an aha moment or a little light bulb moment for you during this video as I was explaining the rhythm transcription because I know when I first did this, it was like a revelation to me and I felt like I can implement things into my playing so much more than when I was only transcribing everything in someone's playing. So yes, it's great to transcribe notes and articulations and dynamics and the rhythms and all that stuff, but it's a little bit harder to then use in your playing. Sure, it is good, I'm not telling you not to do that, but just rhythm transcription can really open yourself up to so many more possibilities when you go to improvise. Speaking of improvisation, I didn't actually improvise in this video. I did the process of transcribing the line, applying it to some chord changes, writing it out, and then playing it. The next step I would say is try to take that rhythm and improvise it over certain chord changes. You can do it any way you want. You can just kind of have a loop of a few measures. You can take an entire chorus like I did with Giant Steps. You can do it in a bunch of different ways, but I think the most important part of the process is what I showed you here. Transcribe the rhythm that you want to get, apply it to chord changes, write it out in a couple different ways, and then apply it to some different songs, writing it out as well. That will get you set up because you'll be thinking about the rhythms, you'll be able to internalize them, you'll be able to implement them in your playing so much better. And then from there, you can go and improvise and mess around with it and, and see what you can do with it. Because from there, it's not about just playing the exact rhythms. Now, once you really have it inside and you got it under your fingers, then you can kind of incorporate it into your solo and maybe play part of that rhythm and start the rhythm or go out of it or add something in the middle. The possibilities are endless. But if you go through this process, it will make it so much easier for you. Don't forget to grab the free worksheet by going to the top of the description down below or going to davepollock.com slash rhythm transcription. I love making these videos teaching you different topics related to saxophone, jazz improvisation, different things in music. And if I haven't covered a topic yet that you want to see, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to make that video for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.